All right, guys. Uh, hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to the upcoming session of another webinar we are doing uh, for our network of our contacts. I'm very happy to see so many former students, current students, uh, even one professor. Hello, guys. It's great to see you. Those of you that are going to watch this session afterwards, hopefully you will like it because today we are going to speak about a topic that uh, it's, it's very unique. And the person that is going to speak today, it's even more unique. Why? Uh, no worries, Oscar. I'm not going to put the bar so high for you, uh, obviously. But uh, I would like to welcome among us uh, our former student. Uh, Oscar finished uh, his master in sports management. Basically, it was last year, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I haven't. Yeah, I I'm not really done yet, but yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. But you are almost, almost, almost. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, obviously, he's also a former ice hockey uh, player in especially in, in detail, a goaltender, which is very unique position in ice hockey. Those of you that are fans of, of the sport, you might know it. But Oscar has been one of the best in the in the Swedish Super League uh, in, uh, in, in the past few years. Uh, he's now retired. Nowadays, he's the director, sports director of the Swedish Women's Hockey League. And today he's going to speak about uh, how basically culture, positive culture, could transform and form sports in general. So, Oscar, thank you very much for being with us today, and uh, thank you very much for finding the time. Obviously, the floor is yours, so we are very much looking forward to hear from you. Thank you, Lucas. So happy to be here, first of all. Uh, nice to do this with you guys. Cruyff uh, has learned so much to me the last uh, two years here, so nice to be here talking about it. I usually talk about this subject through uh, the hockey community and the, uh, the and through the federations and the international scene in hockey. Uh, so um, today I'm going to base the presentation on my my experience in the hockey world. I've been in the locker room for over 30 years. Uh, I've studied uh, hockey culture and hockey's place in society in, uh, at the university here in Sweden. Uh, and I, I tried to connect those two and, uh, and I, it started to get really interesting for me when I realized a few things. Uh, so I, I'm going to, I'm going to take it to some research that has been done in the subject. There is a lot of more uh, that you can read, but most of it is going to be based on my own feelings in being in the sport for so long. Uh, and hopefully, even though you have your roots in other sports, you maybe get some thoughts uh, connecting to this webinar here uh, that you can, bring to your sport uh, so this is what we're going to talk about today um, is uh, the sport the culture of sport the superpower and how can we affect change in society and why should we do it and how could we affect ourselves in both organizations and as we as an individuals um, so uh, Yes, this is me. Uh, like I said, elite player all my life, or not all my life, but uh, for a long time. I'm now the sport director for SDHL. That's the Sweden, the women uh, Swedish hockey league here in Sweden. Uh, that's uh, I would say the best league in the world for women. Uh, so we're really proud of that. We are really growing, uh, and we think like we can. Uh, do kind of the same um, journey as the, the football is doing right now for the women. Uh, like I said, studied for pretty many years, I would say. I'm really proud of that. that. To combine that with an elite career is hard. Uh, I have three children. Uh, and like I said, studying hockey culture, both in locker rooms and how it affects society and organizations. And I also been a board member of the player unions, both on the men and women side of hockey here in Sweden uh, uh, and a few other things. So that's why uh, you should li be listening to me today. Like I said, it's not going to be based everything on research, but this is my background. Uh, so keep that in mind when I give you my own words on my story and what I think about stuff. Um, so. Um, yes, when I started uh, studying this uh, in the university here in Sweden, I, I, I wanted to start by ask a lot of people what they think culture is. Uh, uh, obviously, I was interested in, in the sport culture, 
the culture of sport. But I wanted to start with just answering the question, what is culture? Because I wanted to see uh, how much it was different dancers. And it showed really different perceptions. Uh, some of the words that were mentioned more than others was languages, power structure, history, religion, art, and sports. And none of them are wrong, obviously, um, but it just shown that it's so different response when you ask the question. Um, uh, obviously, I asked a lot of... Uh, people here in Sweden and a lot of them answered the first word they said was Swedish midsummer. That's a tradition here in Sweden when we dance around the tree and drink really uh, strong shots that we call snaps. And that's kind of what we do all day. And that was their first response to what culture is. And I thought that was interesting because it was just so many different answers, but just to go to Swedish midsummer were interesting to me. Like I said, I asked a lot of sport people and they, a lot of them said this established clubs that have long celebrated great success. So I identify that when you talk about culture uh, in a sport way, it's often based on history, how much you have won and how much, much you have lost. If you are a winning team, if you are a winning organization, and it's always or usually based on history. And when I've talked on this subject in in the hockey world, um, it's it's always like you can't change so, some of the culture, or, or in the, sometimes they don't think they can change it at all because they think they are in a way that they have been in the past, and they they think their brand can change because of that, and that's really common here in hockey. And I'm going to talk more about that. Uh, this is how it says in writing when you, when you kind of Google uh, culture. Human activity and social transmitted patterns. Uh, in the blue, they're all human activities. And that again, first of all, when you ask the question what culture is, uh, there's so many different answers. And then you read this, it's all human activities. So how can we make a good uh, surroundings environments around us uh, if we don't really know what culture is and what it uh, means to one another uh, and then i start talking uh, or thinking about in a sport perspective what we do in our locker room when we want to succeed and so on uh, so the conclusion of this kind of investigation it sounds like i'm was a cop but uh, the term culture is used in a broad sense for everything that human societies pass on to future generations, but also to the people around us and then the people around them. So we now know that it's really different approaches to what culture is. We know that it's hard to identify, but we, knew, but we know that everything we do affects the people around us but not only that it keeps on affecting all the way and we're going to talk more about that because hockey in sweden and sport in generally has such a big impact in society so when you think about this you could really see right away that we have a great opportunity here and uh, so back to the hockey kind of culture and also hopefully in, in your sports you can see some connections here how can we implement a good culture in our workplaces or with the people around us and um, i'm going to start with this because this is for me the most important thing when you talk about culture uh, like i was saying a little bit before when you talk about sport culture it's usually based on the, on the history of an organization or or a or a performance from an individual uh, but if you believe that culture is only something historical and static, you will have difficulty creating and developing a modern and positive culture. Uh, obviously, you don't want to change some of that, uh, but you can change whatever you want because culture is creating or, or happening right now. 
So if you go together and talk about it, you can create whatever culture we, you, you will, you can change whatever you want. And I think that's the first thing uh, that I have to explain to the people I work with now from a central perspective when we want to change hockey. Uh, so before I... Uh, going to keep on going with this question i'm just going to talk a little bit about just hockey uh, and what culture of hockey is to me uh, and i always nowadays start with the positive because when i did a podcast in sweden that was at the time the biggest podcast uh they they uh, there was a lot of people just saw me as uh, this negative guy who only talks shit about the hockey that feeds him every day so I'm, I start always with the positive nowadays. Uh, and for me, it's a community through the same love for the game. And you can all, all of you can feel that in your sport. Uh, that's the most beautiful thing with sport, I guess, where people come together, they, they, they achieve or they um, reach for the same goals, even if you're a fan or a player or an organization, just that you can come together as a group. Uh, uh, I think we are really good at this in hockey. We educate through team creation that a group is stronger than, a, than a, an individual. I've probably heard that thousands of times, even since I was a few years old, years old, that the team always comes before the individual. I think hockey is really good at talking about these things. And I think we need that when raising kids in our society. So I think that's a really good thing in hockey. Uh, obviously, it's hard to play sports. It's hard to play hockey uh, and hard challenges and development together. And, and you can keep on going with good stuff and you can find other words. Sometimes it's hard, but uh, this is what's good about the hockey culture to me. Uh, but it's also this. Uh, it's historical behaviors. Uh, you have to be tough all the time. Uh, it's not only on the ice. You have to be tough off the ice uh, all the time. Otherwise, you can't find a place in the locker room and have an impact and, and also play more time on the ice. It's always you have to be tough and not show any emotions. It's passivity to change and improvement. Uh, we a lot of us want it, or a lot of us, a lot of people in hockey want it to be like it's always been. Um, it's group pressure, it's vulnerability and emotions as something negative, like I said, and it's fear and ignorance. And this is my words. Uh, this is how I. This is what I have seen. But I know that for a fact that it's. This is how it looks. Um, but I want to connect that with this. This is a research by Uransky and Fisher. Uh, they have lot, uh, done a lot of research in this, and they identified four risk environments for developing abusive and violent attitudes. And those four are constant effort to prove tough and strong, emotional limitations, heterosexism, and coping with social teasing. Uh, so you see right away that they are pretty connected to my words, and I think that if you have been in hockey all your life, you know that we are now putting our kids and our, our people in our sport in this kind of risk environments. So now we're actually creating people uh, to have a higher risk of becoming more abusive and violent. And then we are also connecting that to all of, all of them that follows us in our sport, all that listen to us and all the power we have because we can communicate to so many people. Um, so this is obviously something that we need to change if we want to be the best that we can be. And I, I've been a lot. I've been to a few talks also, and we're not going to go into that much. But uh, I talked to sport in connecting with with men's violence against women and uh, here in Sweden, I think we are one of the best equality countries in the world, but even so almost 50, almost 50% 50 of all uh, women here uh, are getting abused uh, once in their life or, um, or more. 
so that's a pretty high number. And we know that sport is followed and hockey in Sweden in particular are followed by so many people and especially a lot of guys. Uh, so we can affect this, but we have to change, start by changing kind of ourselves, what we put on out for people in the society. Uh, so it's all about keeping the good and improve the bad. Like I said, there's a lot of good things too. So I'm not just a negative guy who hates sports. I'm, uh, there's a lot of good things, but like, I don't know if it's because I've been an elite player all my life, but it's always about maximum the, the capacity you have. And here again, uh, there's a lot of things we could improve. Uh, the first challenge, and I've been talking about it a little bit already, but uh, there's different approaches to what culture of ice hockey is. Uh, we have seen already that it's different approaches to what culture is. Uh, and consensus requires communication and a common conceptual apparatus. It basically goes down to that we must start and dare to speak and identify the challenges together. I know I've been playing in four of the 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 uh, the, the best organization, the biggest organization in Sweden, and. Uh, I have been in hockey, like I said, all my life. And I never really in the locker room in or in my organization been sitting down and talked about what kind of surroundings uh, we need around us and what I want and uh, how I can feel that I can be myself. So it's just easy to start by saying that start talking about culture. What do you want around you? What makes you feel good? And what is culture to you? Uh, challenge two uh, address it from all levels um, this is Robert Leonard he's one of the best goalkeeper in the world plays in NHL uh, and he has been talking a lot about his mental health and that's one way of addressing it uh, This it's a really good way of addressing it because so many people are listening to the elite players and uh, and there's a lot of other things that are going on, especially in hockey, uh, where we start by educating leaders a little bit more in these kind of questions. And we can see a lot of central uh, project going on, both from the league perspective where I work or from the federations doing kind of project. But I, I still think or I can still see that it's a lot of it leaks out because it doesn't add up all the way. It could be like you 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 have a you play like you're ten or twelve years old. You play, you have a good leader. He's really present in the locker room. They sit down, talk about stuff like that, uh, give the opportunity to be vulnerable. But then two years later, you have a new coach who who wants it to be like it's always been, and you kind of don't know really. And the culture is still there, or at least the bad things. Uh, and there's a lot of guys that plays elite hockey that still do stuff uh, that shouldn't be in our sport. And they say and they are and they act in a way out that still makes this culture kind of there. And, and the things we're doing, the good things are leaking out kind of. So that's why I usually start by saying new guidelines, because I think if we don't go together more, both leagues, federations, organizations, and also organizations at really low levels because a lot of it is happening there and all the leaders. and So we have to kind of do new guidelines and we are working on that right now and it's happening a lot in a new strategy for Swedish hockey is coming up. But uh, new guidelines, I think, is uh, needed if we want to do this big change that we have the possibility to do. Uh, yeah, I, I I just want to mention I did I did a research when I studied uh, here in Sweden on the SHL, the Swedish Hockey League's organization. They it's some people say it's the next best league in the world. It's big organizations, uh, and I did a research on their core values, uh, and this is connecting to to what I've already talked about, but. I had a hard time finding their core values on their webpage and so on. And I couldn't find all of them, even though I called a few people. Uh, and even though I found their core values, I couldn't find, I haven't seen yet a, a guidance document on how 
to live up to their those core values. So here in Sweden, in hockey, I see a lot of core values. I see the vision and mission, but I, I haven't seen how they live up to them. I played in four or five of these organizations, and I haven't seen and I haven't understand what those core values in my organization uh, uh, means and what I should do with them. And I've been pretty high end players with the, with the capacity to talk a lot in the media and so, so uh, we have a lot to do there. I don't know what it is in other sports, but here my feeling a lot is that you do it because you think you need to, or that you want to, uh, have a brand that stands for something but at, at the end they see through you if you don't work with it all the way and have a guidance document and this is also something i've learned a lot about here at Cruyff when i studied here uh, so back to these challenges uh, we're all part of the same culture uh, i I, f I think that when you talk about culture like I have been doing, there's one side that just say I I'm I I should just go somewhere, and there's uh, the other side that connects with me and say that it changed everything around them, and it's so good that you talk about these stuff and so. And then there is a lot of people in between that doesn't say nothing, and I think I think uh, it's because they are afraid of what they have done in this culture because if they know that they're a part of it but it's hard for them to understand what culture is first of all and they have a hard time understanding what they in their actions have done to uh, either raise this kind of culture behaviors or or uh, or, or the opposite side uh, so I usually say uh, what we have done so far, uh, it doesn't matter. It's all about what we knew, do, knew, uh, do now because now we know. And, and that for someone can seem like uh, it's, it's pretty obviously. But here it's kind of a, a quiet culture in hockey that we shouldn't talk about this and we shouldn't address it because we don't know what's going to leak out and what's going to come out. So that's why it's so hard to get through and get more people involved because they're afraid. So we just need to accept that we're all a part of it and it's all about what we're doing from now. Uh, connecting with that, I, I, like I said, I played hockey almost all my life. I went to school studying it for, for a few years, realized that I had been myself part of this culture for many years. And I've been a big part of it because I have been in a way and said stuff and act in a way that really affects people, maybe in a bad way. I've said it's all humor. It's all about what you should be and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I realized that I'm a big, big part of this. So I went back to the locker room, was so like, I really had the motivation to change. I wanted to do it, but it was so hard. It was so hard because I was uh, alone to wanted to change, to say somehow, and I don't want to talk about those things. I, I don't think you should say that. To do that in a group is hard when you have this kind of hard culture in the room. And also it's kind of in the spinal core if you have done it for all your life. So it's really hard to make a change. And that's okay, I think, but it's also better to say that it's so hard so more people understand that because if you're more than one in a group, it's much more easier to make a change. Uh, I've talked to this uh, about this a little bit already, but uh, again, there's a lot of things happening, good uh, project. Uh, I'm a part of some of them, uh, but I'm usually this uh, annoying guy at the meeting and, uh, and uh, or asking the question if it's enough, if we're really doing the change we think we're doing, or if we are doing it because we, we it feels good in ourselves, and I think that question is is important to ask. Uh, but obviously, there's a really good projects going on and have been going on for a while. But that is not only what we are doing to increase the value of our sport 
and to make a better sport and try to be a part of a better society. Uh, this is not enough for that. Uh, so I'm going to wrap it up with four um, slides on um, what should motivate you to really address these kind of questions. Um, the first, improve yourself and your surroundings. Um, by talking about culture and which behaviors are suited to each other is crucial for achieving maximum performance and well-being. Uh, I, I can just go back to my own career. It wasn't before I was starting to become really vulnerable and really dare to talk about uh, soft values and how I feel and stuff like that, that I really developed as a player. I became new hire. Uh, I became the best goal in Sweden at the time. And it, a lot of it has to do with the mentally stuff and my feeling that I could be myself. Uh, and also just talking to it made other people around me talk more about it. So just improve yourself as a human being. This is important to understand that you have to talk about what you feel around you and what makes you feel good. Uh, utilize your organization's potential. Uh, organizations' purpose and goals are reflected in individuals, how they feel and how they help each other achieve goals. A cultural work plan is crucial for this. Uh, I've been saying that already. I've learned it in Cruyff's uh, education here. Uh, but we can't find uh, a team that's really successful or making really good results if they can't work on this because you can't otherwise maximize your, the individual's potential. If you're not, I don't know, Real Madrid just recruiting all the best players in the world, but uh, that's not how it works in hockey or uh, a lot of sports, because if you have a team, you can, you can make, you can make the highest potential if you start by talking to each other and, and, and become vulnerable and then you have leaders in these organizations to have uh, they have to take the first step uh, this is the question i work with mostly right now from the woman's side in hockey and from the league and federation perspective uh, the entire movement within your sport increases its value if it address cultural challenges Growing as a sport is about making generational changes, like we talked about, getting children to start playing and keeping people in the sport. This is not only due to dreams about NHL or Premier League or La Liga, but a big growth factor is which sports talk about these issues. And I usually talk to say, I tell the story, I usually got the question when I was playing, why do you love hockey? And and the few first ten years, yeah, it's wonderful and it's, it's so great, blah blah blah. And then one day I was like, I think it was when I started getting my kids, uh, like I was, why do I really love the sport? Like, is it maybe it's just because I've been playing it? Maybe it's because my dad was playing it? Maybe because I just been here, like it was just naturally. And it's now has fed my table for many years. So, yeah. But is it because I really think the sport is better than other sports? Again, I was this annoying person answering or asking this question back. But why should I really put my kids in hockey? Obviously, I want them to play because I played in all my life. And I want them to, 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 to say, oh, daddy is so great. Uh, and, and they connect through that. But if I step, take a step back and just look at what's best for my kids, and obviously they have to choose by themselves, but the parents has, like you know, um, something in that. I was like, why is, and then I usually the reporter says, yeah, but it's such a great community and it's such a great uh, team. And, and we, again, team cohesion and we teach this, but I usually say back, yeah, but there's a lot of sports that has teams. Like, why should hockey be the place where I put my kid? And if you want to grow as an 
and movement as a sport, like I talked about the, the, the hockey in Sweden, we can't just keep on getting the, the kids that has parents that like hockey. We have to have all the kids who's coming if you, if you want to really compete with other sports and other activities. So usually I, I want to start by answering or asking the question, what sport do parents want their children to participate in if they not have been in the sport before? And I think if you don't say, come out and say, we in hockey is going to be the best in cultural work. We're going to be the best of educating our kid to good human being. If you not do that, it's hard to increase new people in the sport. Um, yes. And last but not least, um, uh, improve society. Uh, I've already talked about it a bit, but our children in our sport are involved and influence society to a large extent. We educate children and young people in a way that permits our sport. We have been given a power because we are interesting through our sport. This power can affect society both negatively and positively. We choose. So I think we all know what effect we could have. Uh, we know that there is a lot of things happening in society that we don't want to happen. And we know that our window out is maybe the biggest of them all. So we can, we can really make a change and be proud of it. And we, from hockey perspective, could really make a, a change here in Sweden because everyone think of us as the toughest, strongest, should always be tough. And hockey is this way and it's a men's sport from the beginning and the women's are pretty new in this sport, to be honest. And it was 100 years ago, only white uh, male and so on. So this is the view people have of us still, even though it's the change is happening now. But still, this is how they look at us. So if we could really make this difference, we could make, really see it in society. Um, so is hockey a superpower? Or in this forum, is sport a superpower? Uh, ask the question, which individuals do we want to raise? Talk about what ice hockey culture is. Culture is never static. Everyone has a responsibility address it from all levels accept that it's okay that it turned out the way it did accept that you were a part of it it's all about what you do starting today and last but not least don't be afraid to break norms even if you fail alone we all stand behind you so uh yeah thank you thanks for listening in Thank you very much for the presentation, Oscar. Uh, it was very insightful. Uh, you've touched upon several, many, many different topics that uh, obviously, hopefully we can go a little bit deeper in the meantime, uh, as we are expecting some questions, hopefully some questions will, will arrive. Let me just ask you the first thing I'm, I'm very curious about, because you already mentioned it, uh, with the example of, of, of the Swedish goaltender, Robin Lehner. Uh, how difficult it must be for a, for, for a professional athlete, obviously, to, to compete uh, on a highest level, uh, bear the pressure, go along with the pressure, and in the meantime, um, stay true to himself. Uh, because like you said, often we are part of uh, some sort of culture that perhaps it's not always the, 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 the most correct one. But uh, together with all the pressure, all the necessity to, 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 to be the best uh, yourself, how do you think it is, uh, it, is, it is easy, it is difficult to stay true to yourself and always speak out your mind? Because often I do believe uh, athletes prefer perhaps to stay silent in order to not uh, maybe destroy the status quo, uh, not uh, destroy the overall morale of the team, etc. Yeah, uh, I, I totally agree. I, I, think, I think that's the kind of new way to go if you are a leader in a team and you step in right away and say, I think for us to be the best we can be, we need to talk instead of not talking and being the way I think a hockey team should be. I think you, if you, if you go into a locker room before the season and say, this is how we should be as a team, I think mm -hmm. you are on the wrong path. You should start by creating uh, the team you want to be. And for 
to do that in a maximum capacity, I think it's crucial that everyone need to explain what kind of people they are, what they need to be themselves. And if you do this kind of work before this culture work, I don't think we're going to see this kind of silence in the future. And, and I don't see it's going to be that hard to, to stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the, for the reply. Uh, Daniel is asking, uh, he's interested in your thoughts on how yourself or we in general can measure the progress uh, of change in the culture of sport in general or in hockey. It seems intangible and difficult to measure and something that, uh, sorry, I'm just lost, uh, and something that will take time to change. How can we know, uh, how can we know in general that uh, we are making some sort of progress? Really good question. Uh, it is hard to measure. Um, but for us, from where I work right now, I can only speak for that. We, I work for, with women hockey. And we are looking at really research from the whole Swedish country, what they think about hockey. There's a lot of words like equality, entertaining, tough, all these words. So we do this every other year. And these have, they, they, they come more and more to more uh, softer thought about hockey or how to explain it. Uh, so we measure it in that way, kind of how they uh, see hockey uh, or Swedish hockey and we also measure it kind of how many young kids start play hockey and especially how many girls start playing hockey because we think girls and women are crucial for us as a um, sport in Sweden to grow because this is the new segment for us the other one is kind of it's just like in football in Europe they, it's a new segment. So that's w one way we can measure if we are doing the right job with this culture work, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Uh, Victor is asking, what is the lag between uh, the need for change and the completed change? Can one be ahead of the cultural, of the cultural change? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's a good question. I, I, I don't really know. Uh, you mean if I, I don't see the questions? Uh, if we will go below down to the questions, you could see uh, it's on the on the right side at the bottom. But uh, oh, okay, what is the lie between the need for change? <laughs> I, I I don't really understand the question to be honest, or or I, I don't have the capacity to answer it. Uh, I'm sorry. Maybe if Victor will elaborate in the meantime, I would like to continue with the fact that uh, when you were doing the presentation, you were mentioning that obviously uh, the, some characteristics of ice hockey, especially that hockey is a tough sport. Obviously, it's like one, if somebody is actually watching hockey, you might know that uh, if you compare often how uh, compare it with football and hockey, it's very common that uh, it's, I'm not, I don't want to say it's a, it's a violent sport, but obviously it's, it's a tough sport. So often this could lead to creation to some sort of uh, toxic masculinity. Uh, do you think that this is something that uh, it's just uh, on the outside or it's really happening within, uh, within, the, within the sport inside, within the locker rooms? So you could see some, some players that uh, are feeling to be empowered to, 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 to perhaps uh, exercise their masculinity in a, in a, in a wrong way. Yes. 100%. And, I, and I, I, would, I would start by saying that hockey is a violent sport. Okay. And I think that's also, uh, I, think it's, I think it's important to say because violent always feeds violent. You don't get violent out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. So that's some, a responsibility we have as a sport as well. And we don't talk about that either. But 100%, I, I think we are creating a locker room that needs masculinity if you want to stay and have a big role in that team mm -hmm. that is crucial for your career as a hockey player right now and it's always been and uh, uh, that's why we need this change also because obviously that that's that doesn't always take the best out of us and all of us mm -hmm. all right uh in the meantime victor just uh, provided some uh, clarification in the chat uh change happens when there is a need for it like incidents but it's also too late as the change was needed to prevent the incident. Can one prevent the incidents by changing ahead of it? 
So basically, try to do something before it actually mm. happens, or try. Yeah. To okay. Happen. Yeah. 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 I think so, and that's why I like to talk about this. But it's also, I think, it's really important to go into what should be motivating you to do it. I, I think if you only talk about what we can do in society, because obviously, usually that's the biggest case that comes out. What has affected one or the bad thing you you read. But I think you should talk about also what it can be improved for yourself as an individual, as the organization, as the team, and as the sport itself. So if we can address more motivational factors, I think that's one way of starting the process earlier than when it happens stuff. But also, I think I want to say one more thing there. Uh, when I talked about culture my first time in this podcast, I was the first, I don't know if first in hockey, but first in Sweden that still was an active player, wanted to start talking about these things. And it led me to actually, I don't know if I can say it already, but it led me to don't, I, I'm, I wasn't at my club <laughs> after that. Uh, and I think there's a lot of things coming out after the career there's a lot of books that write after the career and that's i think that's a big issue we have this kind of silent culture in hockey that we can or we and we dare not to speak about stuff before we have quit mm -hmm. and that's we need to have a, a, an environment that gets the people that still are in the sport to dare to speak this is a very interesting topic that you just mentioned, uh, that uh, often the different athletes, and it goes for different sports, not only for hockey, are basically expressing their opinions or admitting several things once their careers are over. I think it was last year, uh, it was in junior hockey in, in, in Canada, uh, one junior hockey player basically admitted that he is homosexual. Several weeks ago, professional Czech football player admitted the same. Uh, it's uh, unfortunately still very, very rare that uh, active athletes will admit uh, their uh, openly their uh, sexual orientation. So um, on the on the surface and uh, from the outside, the reactions to, to their uh, testimonials, to their statements were very, very positive because they've got a lot of support. I would like to ask you, and may I, 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 I'm sure that uh, the question I'm going to ask you, the reply most probably will be only second guessing because you are not part of the locker rooms. But uh, do you think that it could affect the overall atmosphere in the team when uh, there is, I'm not speaking only about these two uh, statements of these two players, but in general, if there is something that the player will admit openly, something like this, do you think it could uh, destroy the chemistry of the team? Or on the other hand, it could make them even tighter and, 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 a, and a maybe stronger group together? That's, 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 a, that's an interesting question, first of all. I, I'm going to start with saying that, like I said, we are pretty equality country here in Sweden, mm -hmm. where we are, and we are really proud of everything we are doing with pride festivals and like we are really open and like the community thinks Sweden is a great country. Uh, but we haven't had one player in, in the highest league in Sweden that, mm -hmm. that came out and say that they were homosexual. So obviously you see something there that's not like all the way right. Uh, so to answer your question, um, it's impossible to say, first of all, because it never happened and it never happened to me. Mm -hmm. But my guess for, from being in a locker room all my life, I would say it would be a kind of a new situation and this would be hard for a lot of people in that team to adapt to that, mm -hmm. I think, because they have in their core something other. And that's also why we need to talk about is pretty early stage stuff like this and, and, and creating a new environment around us. But if I would have guessed in the locker rooms I've been in, I would say it would be make us stronger as a group than the other way, because this would lead more to be themselves and more to be vulnerable. And like I've been saying all this time here, I think that's the first key to come up to your maximum capacity as an individual. So I think that could be the first step for that group. Mm -hmm. So I would, uh, it, it would be really interesting to see that in Swedish hockey, what happens with the team if they have someone saying they're homosexual. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your honesty and for your very interesting reply. 
Uh, I'm not sure if we are going to have another question. So in the meantime, I'm going to shoot my, my last question I would like to ask. How the different clubs and the different entities, uh, be it clubs in per se or then maybe leagues, can help uh, improving the overall culture? Obviously, I would say through different courses, through education. But uh, is there anything else or are the different clubs and leagues trying to educate their players on different topics, how they should maybe act, how they should react, how they should uh, behave in general in order to, 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 to be not only better players, obviously, but be better humans? Yeah, I, I, I think the, the most important thing, like you say, is the education, because if they know that they can improve themselves, in the organization by doing this work, it, the, everything comes after that. You always look at yourself and how you can improve. It's like we're not talking about the quality from the women's hockey perspective anymore. We only talk about financial sustainability to change the kind of the question. You don't you you don't want to change because of nothing that hard time to start. So obviously that's the first step. But otherwise, like I was saying a little bit, uh, there's a new strategy from the Swedish Federation coming out next year. Mm -hmm. And I know for a fact, because I'm inside a little bit now, that there's a lot of uh, questions raised in, on having a really big part of culture work and how we can change our culture in that strategy. So I think that's a really big step if we can have a great strategy on to getting the organization a way to change their strategy and culture mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this will, this will be the trend. Uh, it's very interesting to know and to see that uh, the proper federation, and I hope more federations, federations will, be, will be doing something similar soon, because that's definitely the first step towards the right direction. Uh, Oscar, thank you very much for your time. It's been lovely speaking to you. I think it's very insightful. Uh, I hope and I do believe that you will continue uh, with this great work. Because it's not often that, uh, in your case, like like you said, professional athlete uh, opens up, speak his or her mind. So hopefully, in your case, you will continue. You will continue to be the voice to to uh, with the continuous change of the of the culture towards something uh, of more consistency and and better. Uh, and obviously, to those of you guys that uh, stayed on the session, thank you very much for watching us. Thank you very much for your questions. And uh, with many of you, I will be seeing uh, obviously in the upcoming weeks days. And the rest of you guys, stay well. Uh, and don't forget, uh, you should, it always should start from every one of us uh, to try to change something. So thank you very much, Oscar. Uh, stay well, all the best. And thank you. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye.